Moon, Philip. I gotta get something. Two minutes. You've been in there 20 minutes already. What are you reading? Edna, the more you talk, the longer it's gonna take. What's that supposed to be, a threat? <laughs> Will you stop that, please? Stop what? That thing you do with your nose. It's disgusting. It bothers you, don't listen. <laughs> Richard, please. My hair isn't done. I have to put my face on. Oh, come on. There isn't time. We have 30 minutes. Richard, stop. I was in bed by 10 every night this week. You never came to bed till 1. Now, with company coming in less than an hour while I'm rushing to get ready. Now you want to. The problem isn't me, Mildred. It's you. You're split up the middle by your own inner conflicts. So you take your frustrations out on me. You make me your whipping boy, psychologically why speaking. Why isn't my pot roast brown enough? Why don't I ever buy kosher pickles? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I'm not perfect. You should have married your mother, the saint. Philip! Two minutes! You said that ten minutes ago. What are you doing? I'm looking a rug. Philip! It's no use, Harold. I can't get into this dress. I've gotten too fat. You're crazy. Well, what do you call this, then? I asked you. What do you call this? Beatrice, you're 36 years old. So Marlena Dietrich is 60. It's all slop. Nothing but slop. You knew from the day we were married that I had a post-nasal drip. Snort, snort. It drives me nuts. It should only be my worst habit. <sighs> All right, Richard. Now you're sulking. Oh, Just because I, I don't wish to be treated like an animal. What do I look like to you? A dog? You said it. I didn't. You better go without me. Last night it was a migraine. Tonight you're too fat. But I am. Look at this. I hate it. I hate it. Beatrice, stop pulling on it. Are you picking on me again? Are you picking on me oh, again? Okay, Beatrice, you're fat and sloppy, but we're going out tonight if you have to wear a slip cut. Well, what do you know? The king has finally left the throne. You're in constant turmoil, Mildred. Constant. Oh, I beg of you, try cracking your knuckles. Please don't make me go out tonight. I communicate, I say everything that's on my mind. Oh, oh no, you don't. You do nothing but criticize. Now, how do you manage to get from I don't communicate to I do nothing but criticize? It's true. You're critical of everything. Oh, where are you going? I have to put the French bread in the oven. French bread? And what's wrong with French bread? Nothing. Well, it's just you usually serve those little dinner rolls with the rib rolls, that's all. Well, you do. Well, if that's being critical, then I quit. Richard, don't you dare leave this out. Uh, see, you put the bread in the oven. For your dinner, Jessica. They're coming up the walk and they're going to hear you. So! Will you stop yelling? Why, all you but care about is what other people you anyway. think. You what just you care about what care? I think. Will you just hold it just here? Just once. Just be... Oh, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh,
What's the matter with Celia? Did she break her arm or something? She's had a long day. We had company. She did the dinner dishes. I'm letting her go home. This is the first evening she's worked in months. She gets away with murder. You tell her that, why don't you? Maybe I will. Good. Oh, uh, good night, Celia. Good night, Celia. Two hundred and fifty bucks a month, and I'm a houseboy. That's a good way to break him, Richard. Well, let him break. Who we'll paid for him anyway? Oh, big man. What has been eating you lately? Nothing I do is right. Nothing I say. What is it with you? I'd rather not talk about it. Okay, now who's not communicating? <sighs> Communication isn't just talking. It, it, it's feeling the other person. It's, it, it's making contact. It, oh, you wouldn't understand. Oh, why don't you come off that holier-than-thou jazz? I remember when we understood each other pretty darn good. Now, all of a sudden, everything is different. Why? That's all I want to know. Why? You wouldn't understand. Anything you don't have an answer for, I wouldn't understand. I want to know what's making you so unhappy. What, the kids, maybe? The house? When did you ever think you'd live in a $49,000 house? That's all life means to you. Money, money, money. What you can buy. I don't see you turning your nose up don't at it. raise your voice, Richard. I didn't need a $49,000 house. Oh, I suppose I needed it. I needed a place to keep my washer and my dryer and my freezer and my 12 cubic foot refrigerator with your blue interior to match your walls. Richard, the children. Never mind the children. I want to know what the Sam Hill you've got to be unhappy oh, about. You say I wouldn't understand one I... more time. I'll raise the roof. Now go ahead, then. Yell all you want. In 15 years, I'm sure the kids have heard it all before anyway. I'm waiting for an answer to my question, Barbara. Oh, you're not waiting. You're demanding. All right. I'm demanding. Well? Please, Richard. I'm getting a headache. Don't you please, Richard. I'm getting a headache, me. You still haven't answered my question, Barbara. Barbara! That bow, you going to put it down or hold it all night? Well, I'll put it down. You keep using that tone of voice, I'll really put it down. Oh, put it down, Richard. Oh, is that, is that down enough for you? Oh, stop it! Don't, don't you dare drop another dish. Okay, I'll just knock one over there. Oh, that's my favorite platter. Now I hope you're satisfied. Well, I'm not. Not do you tell me one thing. One thing. We go through 15 years of struggling. Fifteen years without a quarter. Me with no profession, I, no college degree. Fifteen years of work on my tail off. Praying if I, if I could just stay in the right spot long enough. Fifteen years of that, Barbara. And you're with me. You're with me all the way. And then two years ago, when the world opens up, when we begin to see a little bit of daylight, when we have some of the things that we, we've always dreamed about, when we find that we have it made, you decide that you're unhappy. Why? Just answer that. All right. You want to know why? It's you. It's what's happened to you. It started when Delaney made you general manager. All of a sudden, I don't know you. You're a big shot. You want me to love you for the, the money you earn and, and the things you buy. Well, I'm not a pagan, Richard. I want to worship a man, not some facsimile in gold. Yes. Maximily in gold. Now, what, what is that supposed to mean, huh? Who gave you that line? Dr. Zenwin? Boy, the day I said you could see a marriage counselor... He's a psychologist. I... Oh, whatever he is. The day I said you could see him, I should have cut my throat. Oh, Dr. Zenwin again. Every time I open up to you, really open up to you, it ends up a fight over Dr. Zenwin. There's just no communication. We're strangers, Richard. Total strangers.
then what do we bother talking at all for? Why don't we just shut up? All right, if that's the way you want it. Did I say that's the way I want it? Did I? You said I should shut up. Don't tell me what I said. All I said... Oh, what's the use? I'm going to bed. Good night. Yes, I know, Mr. Harmon. Your wife told me about the incident. Childish, to say the least. Yes? Yes? Yes. You have something against marriage counselors, Mr. Harmon. I'm a lay psychologist, too, you know. Oh, well, no, it's, it's not uh, that. It, it's just that, uh, well, in my family, you never went crying for help. I mean, you'll break your leg. You need somebody to set it, but problems, well, you know, uh, personal things. Family squabbles, money. Sex? Well, I didn't say that. 
The word sex troubles you, Mr. Harmon? Well, <clears throat> no, I mean, why, why should it? The act, then. The act? When? What are you... What's with you, anyway? I didn't come down here to discuss with a perfect stranger. What are you here for, Mr. Harmon? I, uh, I'm uh, here to listen. Two years now, she's been telling me to come to see you to, you know, save our marriage. So, uh, here I am. Save it. Well, that's a mighty tall order, Mr. Harmon, wouldn't you say? Well, I, yeah, well, I suppose so. When was the last time you had relations, Mr. Harmon? What? <clears throat> well, I'd, you, you should know. You see her twice a week. I wanted your answer, Mr. Harmon. Well, I, it'd be about the same as hers. I don't get too far without her. You know, Mr. Harmon, I always suggest that we think of the sex drive as we would of a fine violin. Play it regularly, as it were, and it stays in tune, responding to your slightest touch. But let it sit in the closet, as it were. And can you tell me what would happen, Mr. Harmon? Mr. Harmon. Oh, well, it would, uh, wouldn't work so good. Exactly. It wouldn't work so well. Yeah. Uh, Doc, uh, we're wasting a little time here. If you, if you just tell my wife to stop tearing me down all the time, everything would be all right. I mean, she talks about what I do to her ego. I'd like you to think of the ego, Mr. Harmon, as a big balloon. When we are feeling good about ourselves, it's fully inflated. But the day's frustration soon begin to prick little holes into it. It loses air, as it were. Your job as a husband is to help your wife keep her balloon inflated with respect and appreciation. And she must do as much for you. Let the air out of a balloon, Mr. Harmon. What happens to it? Uh, it deflates. Exactly. It deflates. Well, now, that's it? For 20 bucks, blow up my wife's balloon? It's 11.50. We've only got 10 minutes more. I think we should bring Mrs. Harmon back in. Mrs. Harmon. Oh, yes. Oh. Please. Well, now, Mrs. Harmon, your husband and I had a nice little chat. You mean we're both going to start seeing you regularly? What? Well, you said you would cooperate. You did indicate that you desired to preserve your marriage. Who says it's blowing up? Oh! Doctor, I'd like to tell you something. We're not that sophisticated. I don't know matter what my wife says. Oh, I had a little luck. Enough for her to afford a marriage counselor. Or a lay psychologist. My dad was a plasterer. Her father, her, her father was a postman. Now, our kind of people just don't, we don't, I don't know what I'm doing here, that's all. Richard, please, don't go. I know it's hard for you to believe. It's hard for me, too, but there's something wrong, which we're, we're choking to death, suffocating. I'll call the fire department. Welcome to the Pale Pussycat. My nylon tricot quinoise with embroidered lace applique is fashioned by Mr. Slate of Hollywood with gold slippers by Arnold Dreyfus. The entire outfit is available for under $30, just down the street at the House of Dainties. This baby blue point d'esprit is $28.45 at the House of Dainties. It is copied from a Gernreich original and was featured in last month's Vogue magazine, fashioned with yards of silver and cloth, and also with yellow and white black. That's my father's hand. Hanging out of my sleeve. My father's hand. I used to be a boy. Well, now I'm my father.
Well, maybe I won't go home tonight. I, I give her something to think about. I worry her a little bit. Well, you're on the right track, pal, but it's not the answer. You know your problem, Richard? You depend on Barbara too much. I've been married 19 years, and believe me, the only way to live in a marriage is to live, uh, live out of it, too. You know what I mean? You know, a little hanky-panky now and then. That's a must for guys like us. Come on, Richard, I've known you... How long have I known you? Six years I've known you? Yeah, six. Well, I want to tell you, I don't understand you. You were married when you were 20 years old. And you mean to tell me that in all that time, you never, huh? You never, not even once? Well, why not? Well, I'm not trying to be high and mighty or anything. You know, I uh, never felt, well, you know, I'm the urge. Oh, what the heck? I love my wife. What, I, what am I apologizing for? So I wasn't unfaithful. I'd still shoot me. Oh, pal, pal, wait a I'm not recommending romance to a married man. I'm not talking about hand-holding or mooning around with some lonely little secretary. I'm not talking about that. To me, that's, that's cheating. What, you, you, oh, you mean paying? That's not cheating. No, because it's not for love. It's for relaxation or, or therapy. Barbara wanted you to see that psychologist, didn't she? Mm. All right, all right. I get the same relief, and I save five bucks to boot. Huh? Come on, Richie. Come on, one little stop. It's right on the way home, Miss Girl. It's very gentle, Richie. Very understanding. Lionel, I swear you flipped out. Bringing a man up here in that condition, you have just plain flipped out. No, I haven't, Dee Dee. He needs you. Would I bring a fellow up here in this condition if he doesn't need you? Look, you may know he needs me. I may know he needs me, but it's obvious he don't. He will. Just give him a few minutes to rest. Lionel! That's all. Lionel! Hey! This is nice. See, I like it here. Where are we? Hey, that man is so stoned, Miss America couldn't interest him. Come on, Teddy, you're gonna be fine. You just give him a few minutes, pull himself together, he'll be just as good as new. Look at that, you all right? See, there, he's all right. Look at him. Is that something? Okay, there you go. Now, you two kids, you'll be real good to each other, all right? Lionel, don't you dare leave him here. Lionel! So this is what it comes to, huh? I bring a pal to an old friend for comfort, and this is what I get? Look, I'm not the American Red Cross, and you can stop playing on my psychology. Do you think that's what I'm doing? Yeah. Then I'm ashamed of you if you think that's what I'm doing. This man is in trouble. He's got big problem in his marriage. Who hasn't? He was married when he was 19. 17 years later, look at him. Still 19. So, since when do men grow up? They just grow old. You know what I call this apartment sometimes? Boys Town. Okay, Dee Dee. Okay. Forget it. All right. Come on, Rich. We're not wanted here. Oh. Let's go. Dee Dee's too big for us. Too big for us. Lionel! Come on, hold it, hold it. <laughs> Come on, sweetie. Come on, Buster. Let's go. Where are we going? To paradise, and I haven't got all night. Come on. Come on, you want to come with Dee Dee? Dee Dee? Dee Dee Murphy? Dee Dee Murphy? Where's Lionel? Listen, come on, you know what? I really like you a lot. You really are something very special. Come on. Come on, you think I was dragging you to your death for crying out loud? Come on! No, I, I'm, I think... What? What? Don't, please don't pass out, please. Don't pass out! Damn! Damn, damn. What am I gonna do now? Hold on. 
on, mister. You're not passed out. What is this, anyway? Please, don't make a scene. What am I, some kind of an idiot? Are you playing games with me? Oh, no, I know you're, you're tight. You think you're too good for me, huh? No, no, yeah, it's nothing. I get the message. Lousy, goody, two shoes. That's not true. Go on, beat it! Miss Dee Dee, you gotta understand, I didn't know where I was when I came up here. And I'm no goody two shoes. I'm just a square. <laughs> I forgot. You're married. It's married, married. Well, don't feel bad about it. You can't help what you are. What are you doing now? Well, I took every time. But I didn't do anything for that. What kind of a girl do you think I am? Boy, you really know how to insult a person. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What can I say? Try goodbye. Richard. Thank you for bringing home champagne and for sending the boys down the street to sleep and for wanting to be alone with me and for listening to me so mm, patiently. <laughs> Do I sound nutty? <laughs> Are you kidding? No, no, no. Sh shall I tell you something? I am nutty. <laughs> no, come on. No, we, I really am. I'm, I'm, I'm getting oh, soft in the head. I, if you I, say so, okay. No. But you're going to have to prove it. Okay. First, I feel like laughing. Don't laugh. Help me. I'm scared. Oh, 
Oh, sweetheart, don't be scared. What, you know, don't you think you're soft in the head? Ever since I turned 35, every time I pick up a newspaper, first thing I look for, girls. Girls! A Time Magazine. Even in Time Magazine, a Charles de Gaulle can be thumbing his nose on the cover. I'm leafing through there. I'm looking through cinema, show business, modern living, you know, looking for a little light cleavage in here. I, can't, I tell you, I give it about two weeks, and they're going to lock me up. <laughs> That's funny. I never noticed you had such an eye for the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> you kidding? <laughs> Of course, my bark's a lot worse than my bite. <laughs> well, ask Lionel. Or ask Dee Dee Murphy. Who's Dee Dee Murphy? this way for like what how am i acting you won't be like that honey i'm i told you where i was tonight and nothing happened when i told you that whole story if anything happened don't carry on like you don't believe me because i know better all right i believe you you were drunk you were taken someplace, and nothing happened. But if you had had a heart attack, they'd still have found you in another woman's apartment. What? How would I know if you had died there? How would your children have known? <laughs> I didn't die there. But what if you had? Oh, Barbara. What if you had, Richard? I carry a note in my pocket all the time. Uh, if I die in a strange lady's apartment, she's to cremate the body and, and flush the remains. <laughs> you feel better? Very funny. Richard. Let's not talk about it now. Richard, don't kiss me that way. I don't like it. You love it. You tell me when I nibble the corner of your mouth. Not anymore. Kiss me like a man, not a chipmunk. Kiss you like a man. You wouldn't know a man if you fell under one. Oh, I wouldn't, huh? Well, maybe not. But I'd sure know a man if I'd been living with one. You better quit right there, Barbara. No. Where are you going? Anywhere but here. I don't know what you think you've been living with all these years, and I don't care, but I haven't done so bad by you, sweetheart. Most women would give their eye teeth to live the way you do. And don't you forget it. Things again. You're talking about things again. When are you going to get it through your head? I don't need things. I need you. So you got me. Where do I go? What do I do? You open up the door in the morning and let me out. In the evening, like clockwork, I'm back. Now, how much more can you have me? By cutting me up and swallowing me. And that's just what you're trying to do. If I'm any less of a man, I haven't lost anything. You took it. i got to take my hand off to you, Barbara. You are now the better man. Richard! You call me, sir? I'm not like that. I'm not like that at all. You've twisted everything to make it come out that way. You're not a man, Richard. Barbara. But you're not, because a man isn't afraid to be tender, and he isn't afraid to be gentle and soft. That's enough, Barbara. That's not enough. And he isn't trying to prove his maleness with things all the time. And he doesn't come sweet talking to his wife with a bottle of champagne just because some $10 affair has just disappointed him. With all the gab, you never did tell me what happened. Was he playing around? No. Somebody else look good to you? Oh, Fern. Barbara, Richard has left home. Something must have gone wrong. It's like we... we just 
started to disintegrate. Oh, one day we weren't talking, and then we weren't touching. It's just our whole relationship, everything we had together, just started to unravel, to shred. So marriages don't break up. They unravel. Oh, I don't know. Fern, do you still think I shouldn't call him? I didn't say you shouldn't call him, doll. Oh, I'd never forgive myself if I were wrong. No, all I said was, if he were my husband, he could go hang himself before I'd call him. That's all I said. Oh, I hate to mention the word, doll, but you really ought to talk to a lawyer. Lawyer? For advice. That's all I mean, doll, just for advice. David Grease's office. Yes, he is. I mean conference, damn it! But it's your wife's cousin, Barbara Harmon. Yeah. Well, Barbara, a long time no hear from. How are the kids? Oh, fine, David, thank you. Good, good. Uh, how's your family? Couldn't be better. Uh, Barbara, if you're calling about that uh, heart fund, I know you worked for it last year, uh, but I uh, gave already. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not calling about the heart fund, David. I, uh, I really don't know how to say this, uh, but I have to talk to someone. You know, for advice, it's Richard. We had a terrible fight, quite serious. And he's left the house. What's that about Richard Barbary had a terrible night and wants to sell the house? Mr. Find Grief. Him. But Mr. Grief is... Find them. I'm uh, sorry, uh, Barbara. Uh, hold on a second, will you? There. That's better, Barbara. Now, uh, you were saying? Richard's left me, David. A few nights ago. What do you think he has in mind? A uh, divorce? Divorce? What's the matter? You act like you never heard the word before. Well, it's just that I, uh... Well, the word has never come up. Uh, uh, divorce is, uh, mighty, uh, permanent, uh, Barbara. I'd, uh... I'd only think of it as a last resort, if I were you. But I haven't said anything about a divorce. You're the one that brought it up, David. Now, hold on a minute, kiddo. I didn't call you, you know. Here. Uh, Barbara, I, uh, don't think we should be talking about this on the telephone anyway. Uh, come in and see me tomorrow at, uh, Eleven. Uh, 11. Do you think that's necessary, David? Oh, and Barbara, uh... I think you ought to, uh, stop at the bank before you come here. Uh, clean out the joint savings account and, uh, safety deposit box. David, you don't think that Richard would... Well, you can't tell now. He may have been advised to. Now, you listen to me and save yourself a lot of trouble, dear. <laughs>
tell you that no matter what your woes, regardless of your hardships, your burdens, your heartbreaks, sores and afflictions, notwithstanding your torment, distress and vexation, despite your misery, anguish, wretchedness and desolation, as founder of the Self-Appreciation World Fellowship Uplift Church, I tell you there is salvation, friend. See, for heaven's salvation sake. I don't want to hear the word it until it comes directly from blood. him. To your bosom, the very word. Hi, Mom. What are you doing up so early on a Sunday? Well, I thought I'd make you both a nice big breakfast. Anything you want. Just use for me. Well, we haven't got time. Dad will be picking us up any minute. Well, he'll just have to wait. Now, orders for the cook. You can have the pancakes, egg, cereal. And, Mark, look, I got you that extra thick bacon you like. Mom, you and Dad aren't going to start competing for us, are you? Well, I mean, I've been telling you about that extra thick bacon for years. Yeah, and Dad never got up early on Sunday before. Oh, boy. I don't know. I mean, I, I really don't know. You, you, you read all the books, and you hear all the stories. I, I thought kids are positively traumatized by this kind of thing. Mom, you, you want us to be traumatized? No. Sure, why not? I mean, just a teeny weeny trauma. You know, a little upset stomach. A lot of kids at school come from broken homes. Jonathan. Uh, look, Jonathan, I just don't want you to talk that way. Anyway, it's no big deal. There's Dad now. We gotta go, Mom. See you later. Bye, Mom. Have a good day. And so again, loved ones, no matter how bitter, provoked, beset, cursed, and pestered you may be, however grief, perturbed... <laughs> How'd you do that? Have you been practicing a night or something? Yes, sir. Hey, get up there, Pop. Let's see you do it. Me? You want to see some bowling now? I want to see some bowling. Come on, Dad. Let's see you put it down there. That's what's known as a sewer ball, Dad. Well, better luck next time, old timer. <laughs> Come on, Dad. Get it right down there. Go on. A little action now, Pop. <laughs> You're a first crack at this sort of thing? I don't know how you can tell that. The only thing is my fingers, they get claustrophobic in those little holes. <laughs> no, no, I didn't mean that. It's obvious you've never bowled before. <laughs> uh, what I meant was your first divorce? Huh? Uh, the Sunday father, nothing easier to spot. Uh, we've all got that uh, what'll I do next look in our eyes. <laughs> what are you doing next? Well, whatever the boys would like. Miniature golf, maybe? Horseback riding? Mm-hmm. See what I mean? My daughters are over there on lane four. Uh, Nelson Downs, a name? Richard Harvey. How are you? Oh. <laughs> Say, I got an idea. Hey, girls, come over here and meet the Harmon boys, will you? Uh, Mr. Harmon, I'd like to present my daughter, Cynthia, and my daughter, Maggie. Cynthia, nice to meet you. Uh, hey, oh, come on in, hi, fellas. fellas. Mark and Jonathan. Yes. Well, the kids are getting along just fine. <laughs> yep. I'm distributor for all the Shenny liquors. Oh, yeah? Do a big job. Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> and you? I'm with uh, Delaney Manufacturing. General manager. Oh, that, oh, here, just a minute, I'll get it. No, that's a fine outfit, Delaney Manufacturing. Huh? No manager, huh? <laughs> nice. Nice. It's not easy, this divorce business. When do your acts fall on you? What? You know, actually, I'm not divorced. You just assumed that. Oh, now, look, Harmon, don't hang me up on a technicality. If you're not divorced, you're about to be. I know the look. Uh, how much uh, alimony do you figure to be stuck with? 
No, I don't see what, what's no, that look, I can tell you business? what she'll ask for. What's your gross? 30,000? 35? Oh, more than 35,000? <laughs> well, that's nice. Nice. Well, she'll probably ask look, for... Look, it's a... getting on lunchtime. I think I'll go get the boys. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, fine. Now, look, uh, don't get sore, huh? I just want to help you figure how you're going to come out. Well, I tell you, let me, uh, let me put your mind to rest. I'm, I'm loaded. My wife's loaded. We're independently wealthy. So you can stop worrying about me, good enough? Yeah, sure, fine. <laughs> good enough. <laughs> good enough. Hey, you really ought to be mad, fella. Uh, the funny thing about divorced men is uh, we're like two people with the same operation. We have to compare scars. <laughs> anyway, I didn't mean to pry. I just wanted to see, uh, you know, how badly you were cut up. Well, now, you know I'm not cut up. Uh, yes, I can see that, and I'm delighted. <laughs> delighted. Uh, uh, say, hey, just a minute. I got another idea. Cynthia, Maggie, come on over here, will you please? <clears throat> Uh, say, girls, how'd you like to bring uh, Mark and Jonathan over to the house for lunch? Yeah, that's right. Come on, Dad. Hey, we can take your car. Cynthia can drive. Yeah, us. she's been driving since December. They'll be all right. We'll go in my car. Come on, come on. My ex-wife just loves company. She won't mind. Shouldn't I give her the keys? Oh, yeah. Here you are, honey. Well, here we are. Uh, I'll get in this side. That other door is sprung all together. Damn this thing. I had the kid on my block fix it just yesterday. <laughs> Here, hold this, will you? Didn't you say you distributed all of Shenley's products? Yep. Well, uh, but like locally, just uh, in, in one section of town. Oh, no, no. I have California and the entire Pacific Northwest. <laughs> you see, some of us get cut up pretty badly. I tell you, it's murder, boy. After 15 years of marriage and two kids, when the court gets through with you, 32,000 a year doesn't go very far. 32,000? Yeah, that's over $600 a week. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, thank heavens you won't feel the pinch, though. Probably even looking forward to taking on new obligations. <laughs> like, uh, getting married again. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir, I can imagine how anxious you must be to find the right woman. Your uh, present wife, a blonde, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Well, sir, a nice, cool brunette would be just what the doctor ordered. Well, hello. Ah, the woman of the hour. <laughs> Nancy Downs, Richard Harmon. And uh, out yonder, sons Mark and Jonathan. Well, I'm very happy to know you, Mr. Harmon. How do you do? The boys are from a previous marriage, I assume. Uh, no, he's in the process of being divorced now. <laughs> he's going to come through it, eh? Okay, though. Right, old man? <laughs> Where did Nelson find you? At the skating rink or the bowling alley? <laughs> the bowling alley? Nelson, I think you ought to blow the skating rink altogether. Uh, how do you like the house, Richard? <laughs> Old Nancy here is uh, quite a homemaker. <laughs> Did it all herself. No decorators. Uh, keeps it herself, too. Well, Nelson's almost right. I had some professional help on the lamps, rugs, chairs, divans, antiques, fabrics, and fixtures. The ashtrays I selected myself and these lovely book matches. <laughs> I'm joking, of course, but Nelson sells me so hard sometimes it offends my sense of modesty. <coughs> I'll admit this much, though, Mr. Harmon. I am a remarkable woman. Well, you must be a remarkable woman, Mrs. Uh, Downs. Uh, you're the first person I've met with her own personal slave. Well, you're being a little unfair, Richard. Well, well, you're wasting your life away carrying oats to a dead horse, and I'm being unfair? But it's not Nancy's fault, old man. She didn't write the divorce laws. You mean to tell me that the courts of this nation will see a man reduced to 
abject poverty, practically, while his wife goes right along living high on a hog? Huh? No, I don't believe that. Why the devil didn't you ever remarry? Economics. I haven't found a man who could afford to care for us as well as Nelson's alimony. I said us, Mr. Harmon. I have two daughters. One starts college next year, the other will begin before the first one's finished. Now, what would you have me tell them? Forget college? Or would you rather we gave up this house? Well, they grew up in this house. Their friends are in this neighborhood. Their life, their security is here. Now, do we turn them upside down because their parents couldn't make a go of their marriage? Do we? <laughs> Look, I know we're spoiled, but it's Nelson's fault. He was too good a provider. I'd love to get him off the hook. I'd like to get off the hook myself. That's why I'm willing to meet the men that he brings over. I'm lonely, Mr. Harmon. Well, we see you again? <laughs> Maybe. What do you say, boys? Hey, that leg, is that anything serious? No, nothing. I uh, tore the cartilage in my knee about six months ago. They want $500 to straighten it out. <laughs> Damn surgeons. Got that order from Lockheed for the KBY, sixty thousand, but they want five weeks delivery. You think we can handle that? Well, we have to. You uh, didn't hear from Barbara yet, huh? Well, did you call your lawyer? I mean, after that episode in the bank. I know. Tried to call him four times yesterday, six times today. He's in meetings. If he isn't in meetings, he's on a golf course. What do you want me to do? Install a phone in his golf bag? Okay, okay pal. I'm just trying to help. Mr. Harmon, there's a Mr. Idelson here to see... Mr. Harmon? Aye, Mr. Harmon. Oh, goodness. How was I to know? Here. What? What? Oh, no. No. Mm -mm. Hey, there, Mr. Harmon. No. This won't hurt a bit. Mr. Feldman, call Larry Strickland again. Oh, come on, Mr. Uh, uh, Harmon. It took uh, me all day uh, to get uh, here. Tell her, girl, I have to have him. There's no time to lose. Feldman, you hear me? Hurry up. He's still in a meeting, Mr. Harmon. I've got his girl on the phone, and she refuses to buzz. Is she on one? On one. Hello, is Mr. Strickland's office? Uh, yes, well, uh, <clears throat> this is Dr. Harry Swados calling. I'm Mr. Richard Harmon's personal physician, and I'm calling you from the operating room of Cedars of Lebanon Hospital, where I have just opened Mr. Harmon's heart cavity. He has possibly three to six minutes to live, and... He wants to talk to Mr. Strickland to dictate some last-minute changes in his will, so you put him on the phone right away. Do I? He's busy. Would I repeat the changes slowly so you can write them down? The man is dying here. What's the matter with you people? You can't get anybody... Wait a minute. Anybody... Give me that phone. Before discussing the uh, property settlement per se, I would feel remiss indeed if I didn't institute one final plea for reconciliation. I have told my client, and I'm sure, counsel, that you have articulated as much to Mrs. Harmon. Divorce is an extremely sad and uh, unpleasant business. Oh, no question, counsel. That reconciliation should always be considered. I was involved in a very difficult marital matter, Lovequist versus Lovequist. Freddie Lovequist? Mm -hmm. Say, do you represent old Freddie Lovequist? Oh, sure, I've handled Freddie's affairs ever since the Palmdale Savings and Guarantee matter. Well, then you know Bob Hackett. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, how did old Bob come out of that Midland Trust litigation? <laughs> oh, you know, Bob, he's a fighter when he's pinned to the mat. Yeah, huh? you, you know, I represented his sister, Myrna, when yeah. she went through Excuse that me, whole... Could we, uh, could we get on? Oh, oh yeah. Well, Listen, we'll get together, huh? We'll talk about them over lunch. lunch right. Well, now, to the uh, property settlement, I've prepared a list here of major items of community property with some suggestions as to how they may be distributed amongst the uh, parties. Sir. Mm hmm Richard? Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Seems to be fair. Split right down the middle. The uh, house to Barbara. The mortgage payments to me. The furnishings, color TV and piano, to Barbara. The uh, monthly payments to me. The insurance benefits to Barbara. The premiums to me. The uranium in our uranium mine uranium to Barbara. Uranium mine. And the shaft to me. It's 
see. We're going to have some bitterness, aren't we? Huh? Now, folks, this is just what we must try to avoid. Yes, why are you so hostile? I mean, isn't it bad enough? Must you pour salt over the wounds? Now, look, lady, I didn't start pouring the salt. Now, I never hated you. Hate? Who said anything about hate? What does it sound like to you? Defendant was insulting and demeaning. Defendant was cruel, oh, abusive, often sadistic. Oh, I, I, Defendant threatened severe bodily harm to the plaintiff's person. Now, what does that sound like? Well, I didn't know it said that. Oh. I, well, it's true. I would never say anything like that. David has twisted my words. Well, There's no reason for anything. Well, I have explained no. to clients, don't take to David, it so personal. It's just the way these things like are written. And which the, the court accepts up, prima no, facie. I've used about. the identical the language. Oh, oh, of course. Now, that's a formal you, uh, charge you against you. Go don't you, David? I, I Certainly. Said Certainly. Haven't I run into you out at Lawn In a foursome with Milt Vincent. Hey, hey, that's a great chorus, Lawn View. The dining room's pretty good, too. You must never try the steak tartare at Hillside. You can't touch the lobster Louis at Lawn. Why don't we get a foursome together some weekend? Yeah. 18 holes, a little lunch, huh? Well, it's a date. Well, uh, you folks ready to continue now? <clears throat> Counsel, I wonder if we might not get right down to the bottom line. Have you calculated what Mr. Harmon will have left after all the deductions? Yes, uh, they're right here. In addition to the uh, items mentioned so far, we're asking a minimum child support figure, of course. Uh, continued payments on last year's home improvement loan, money for Miss Harmon's taxes. Can't forget Uncle Sam, can we? <laughs> and extra medical expenses. Now, deducting all of the obligations to Mrs. Harmon and both their taxes, this uh, figure remains. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 8730. Oh. What are 8730? 8730 oh. what? 8730. Oh. <laughs> You're kidding. You're not kidding. You're out of your minds. Oh, Mr. Harmon. No, you don't have to call me Mr. Harmon. I make 8730. Oh. You call me Dicky. You can whistle. If this seems harsh, Mr. Harmon. Harsh? What makes you say harsh? I only make $25,000 a year. Why shouldn't I live on $87.30 a week? Richard, well, I don't want to talk on. about it. I don't want to talk about it. I'll fight that to the death. I'll take it to the Supreme Court, to Nuremberg. Go no on, Mr. Harmon. But, Your Honor, a, a human being can't live on $87.30 a week. Human beings can and do, Mr. Harmon. You may be a better one when you learn how. The defendant will be required to make all payments as detailed in Exhibit 1. These proceedings are concluded. Oh, oh, that's a way the cookie crumbles. Listen, we gave it a go, right, Rich? Huh? Dreamed this. Yeah. Dream. When do we go to court? We go tomorrow, don't we? Well, I'll, I'll buy you a drink. Harvest your victory, so you name it for lunch. My treat. Scandia, the Derby for Scotty. Chop, sir? Shut up, David. seeing you like this. You're not the first guy that's been through it. This isn't so bad. I mean, this is good. Got your privacy here. You got a little bar. You got a, got a little sink. Hey. <laughs> got everything. Yeah. OK. I love this, you know? I love that you can stand in one spot and you can reach everything. You don't have to 
run around all over the place. You know, it's uh, a lot of people like a, a big kitchen, but but that is, uh, yeah, that's. Hey, you know, I almost forgot this. I ran into a little something yesterday. We just perfect for you. She's about thirty. She's crazy looking, and her boyfriend travels. Huh? That's like pushing a button. Yeah, well, you push it yourself. Oh, now, wait a minute, pal. You know how I feel about this. I mean, this dinner and drinks and hand-holding style. I'm a married man. Yeah. Jeez, I don't get you. I mean, 17 years, you've been with a ball and chain. Now you're free and you... Yeah, let's see this. Hey, gee, it's 6 o'clock, Richard. I gotta be going. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, okay? hey, don't go. I thought we were gonna have dinner together. Well, I'd love to, fella, but Fern's holding dinner for me. See, this is the first time I'll be able to eat with the kids in weeks. Big deal. Well, look, can't, can't you call Fern? The kids won't mind just this once. Oh, the kids won't mind, but you know Fern should make a big deal out of the whole thing. Listen, uh, you sure you don't want to, huh? Well, say look here. Let's see, pal. Double cheeseburger, french fries, and a Coke, 67 cents. Nancy Downs, remember? Uh, remember well. How's your finger? My finger? I was sure you broke it. What else could keep you from dialing? You had your day in court yet? Oh, no. No, no, I uh, do my own laundry and drive a kiddie car because I lost a bet. Oh, I see. You got killed. Well, what, me? Killed? No, first I uh, got scalped. Shot, electrocuted, <laughs> then I got killed. Oh, that's why Nelson hasn't mentioned your name for the past couple of months. Oops. Better be running. When I'm through running, I'll be back in the locker room. Do you remember the address? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. since I dated. But believe me, nothing's changed, Doctor. After 10,000 packs of cigarettes, men just breathe heavier, that's all. They still don't know which things hook and which things snap. Thank heavens. I'm not sure I understand about the thank heaven, Mrs. Harmon. We expect men to be uh, stimulated by the women they take out, don't we? No, oh, I don't know. 
I just know I'm tired of it. You said the best way to make a fresh start was to start fresh. Well, you know something? It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters to them is that I'm a divorcee. You know, my kid brother and his pals used to talk a lot about nurses. If you could ever get a hold of one, you really had it made, they said. Well, I've got news for you, doctor. The boys have grown up. They don't believe in that kid stuff about nurses anymore. Whew. No, siree. Now it's divorcees. That may be, Mrs. Harmon, but you're well able to handle them. I don't want you to stop dating. Remember, somewhere out there is another Mr. Wright. Sure is a nice day, isn't it? We're gonna pick up the two kids from my second marriage now. These two are from my first. Four swell kids, you'll love them all. Give me that, that's my head. Harriet, to me. you stop that now. No, I want it, Ow. Bruce, you let her alone. Isn't this a nice neighborhood? I bought this house when my second wife and I were married. When she got married again, she decided to stay in it. My first wife is still in the house I bought her, too. Hey, look, there's Benji. Hurry, open up. Oh, oh, oh. Open, open, open. Hey. Chris, Melissa. What? Hey, I want to play with that. Here we are. The little girl with the security blanket and the boy playing tetherball, they're mine. Melissa and Benji. The other boy, the one on the bike, he's from Ruth's first marriage. Ruth, that's my second wife. She was married once before me. Oh, I'll help you. Thank you. Anyway, the other boy is from that marriage. And the little girl, the one that was on the swing, well, she's from her present marriage. She's married to Howard Thresher, the architect. Oh, there's Howard now. Benji, hi. Hi, Howard. Benji, hi, Farley. Betsy, honey. Howard was married before, too. And the kids with him are from his first marriage. He brings them here every Sunday. Harriet, Bruce, go find Melissa and Benji. No, Harriet. That's not Melissa. Melissa's your little sister, the one with the blanket. We better help him. Melissa, Benji, Daddy's here. Hello, Farley. How's the boy, Howard? Real good. Thanks. Barbara Harmon, Howard Thresh. How do you do? Oh, there's Ralph. Hey, Ralph. That's Ralph Amos, Ruth's first husband. Come to pick up his boy. The three kids with him are. Uh, well, one of them is from his second marriage. He picks her up before he comes here. And the other two are from his present marriage. They like to come along for the ride. Hi, Ralph. I told you to get hey, fancy. Molly. Hi, Ralph. What do you know, How's the boy? Uh, Say hello to Barbara Harmon. Oh, hello, Bob. I don't know what Harriet, Harriet, get here. Melissa. Hey, We're going Hey, now. kids, stop running. Well. Anybody in the come car, on, gang? <laughs> Hurry, kids. Ready, we got to get going. Come on. It's getting late. If we're oh, ever going to get to that picnic, let's go. Bruce, Bruce say hello to Barbara oh, Harmon. Oh, pleased to meet you, Barbara. Come on. Benji. Benji. Michael. Benji. Come on. Nancy. Roger. Nancy, come out of there. Benji, put that pistol down and find Melissa. Benji, will you put that pistol down? Benji, oh, Benji, when I tell you that, Chris, did you hear me? Come on, Benji. Hi, Benji. Out of my way, Benji, I want Chris. Come on, Chris. Harriet, Bruce, find Melissa. Oh, I'm going to go with Daddy. Not today. Today you go with me. Ruth, make sure you don't have Melissa. No, Chris, oh, no. Oh, you're not supposed to go with Daddy today. Oh, you're not in this car, Benji, but Benji is. <laughs> It's Sunday, remember? Well, today yeah. you're with Uncle Daddy. Now, you don't go with this brother today. Go with your other brother. You, you go in here. Come on, I'll explain later. You just get in there. Come on, Benji. No more of this foolishness. Come on, now. You can ride up in front with me.
that you wouldn't get serious. I'm not asking you to love me. Not yet. Can't I start loving you? Oh, Richard. Now why do we have to go through that again? So you've been divorced for eight years. You dated a lot of guys. So? So? Why can't this be like all the others? Why does it have to be different? <laughs> Why pick on me? Because this time I care. So, Richard, we have to move this to the next plateau. if you don't mind. Uh, what's he doing here? Oh, Nelson, you're drunk. Oh, that's a hell of a deduction. <laughs> look, Nelson. Uh, now, don't you look Nelson me. He's got a razor. Uh, I'm not going to use it on you. You're going to use it on me. Come on, take it and cut my throat. Well, knock it off, Nelson. Oh, don't, don't be like that, pal. Take it. You're killing me anyway. This will be a little faster, that's all. Stop that crazy talk, Nelson. Now stop it. Hey, do you want to do it, Nancy? You know, let me take a second. And I promise not to gush. Well, damn it! Are you guys gonna cut my throat, aren't you? Huh? Nelson, please put the razor down. Now, nobody wants to cut your throat. We want you to live. You do. Say. Say, did you hear that, Nancy? <laughs> he says uh, you want me to live, is that right? Well, of course we do. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, then. You two will stop seeing each other as of right now. I mean, no more going out together and no more house visits. I don't even want you talking on the telephone, is that clear? No. No. No? <laughs> no, I... <laughs> Uh, Please, Nelson, don't do that. Uh, 
Nothing worse than a grown man <laughs> crying. I know that, Richard, and I'm so ashamed, but I can't stop it. <laughs> 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 When you started going with him, I warned you. I... <laughs> Don't get hung on this guy. He takes home $87.30 a week, I said. Think of me, I said. There is no future for me in your relationship with him, I said. <laughs> 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 Only last month, I had three prospective prospects for her, and one of them was a dentist. <laughs> a dentist, mind you. <laughs> well, I couldn't even get her on the phone because she's so hung up with a <laughs> pauper. Why didn't you listen to me, Nancy? <laughs> Why? Nelson, she'll yeah. listen to you now. Hey, Richard, please don't go. <laughs> we agreed when we started, no strings, no traps, no chains, and no new plateaus. It's not just Nelson. It had to happen sooner or later anyway. Sorry, Nancy. I had to come. Eunice, that's my fiance, is pressing me for a wedding date. I... Say, you really hung on this guy? Oh, damn. Oh, it's not your fault, Nelson. The timing's wrong. He still hasn't gotten over 17 years of marriage. Maybe you could consider living on his income. I'd still be paying child support. That's $50 a week. And with his 87, that is $137 a week. <laughs> uh, I might also consider kicking in an extra 50 bucks now and then. <laughs> I mean, you know what the court doesn't know won't hurt it. <laughs> Even if I would, he wouldn't. He sees the way we live. To support this household, you'd need, uh... <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh. Well, it's just a shot. <sighs> Nelson, I may have an idea. Tell me. You want to marry me off. I want to marry me off. And all I want is Richard. Now, Richard can't marry me because of Barbara. Now, instead of you trying to find someone for me, why don't we try and find someone for Barbara? Richard off the hook. You nail him. Which lets me off the hook. And I marry Eunice. Which incidentally lets some poor schnook in Bakersfield off the hook. Oh, it's a brilliant idea. <laughs> I'll find a guy for Barbara Harmon before you can say. Howdy. Al Yearling here. Owner manager of Al Yearling Car City. We'll get back to our movie in just a minute. Folks, we're the largest car dealership in the western part of the United States. And if you ask me the reason for it, I'd have to sum it up in two words. We care. Let's see now how many possibilities we've got. There's Dick Case, Roger Flown, Mickey Keene. Say, do you think Barbara would like Mickey Keene? Uh-uh. 
Not from the way Richard described her. How about Chuck Lynch? He's tall, attractive. Oh, Cynthia, please. If you're not going to watch the TV, I wish you'd turn it. Our sincerity, our earnest desire to put you and your family in the finest, safest vehicles your money can buy. And at a price you can afford. At Al Yearling Car City, we tailor the payments to fit your pocketbook, your income, your needs. Folks, Al Yearling. I'd forgotten all about him. He's a swinger. I liked him myself, don't you remember? And how do we sell yeah. Him? Selling you, us. Yeah. And so will Barbara. He's simple, uncomplicated. Gentle, kind, and loaded. Oh, Nelson, I think we found him. Oh, nice, nice. Wait a minute. What about his mother? That's why he and I never caught on. He had that mother. Yes, but that's the best part. I understand the mother died. Al Yearling is ready to live. Here on TV. Just pick up the phone and you call Al Yearling Car City. Leave your name and address and the car you like. And you know what? I'll bring you the car myself, personally. Let Big Al deliver your car to you. Call 879-0512. 879-0512. 879-0512. Howdy. I'm Al Yearling. Oh, I'm sorry, but whatever it is you're selling, I... Oh, ma'am, you don't understand. I'm trying to find Barbara Harmon. I'm Barbara Harmon. Oh, well, <laughs> hi. <laughs> That's a pretty stiff neck you've got there. My mother used to get them all the time. Oh, what cured her? Oh, she died. Well, look, I'm very busy. Oh, no, no, you, you don't, don't understand. I, I brought you your car. <laughs> a car? I'm, a. Uh, I'm Al Yearling, the, oh, I... the car salesman. Oh, you're there, Al Yearling. <laughs> yes. You know, I used to watch you uh, on TV television, with, yes, with your TV. mother. That's right, oh, yes. My. That's when I had that motto, I won't sell a car that I wouldn't put my mother in. She's gone now, bless her sweet soul. Oh, you should tell me. Yes, sad. very sad. Said, yes. Hey, I just can't see you suffer like that. You know, I used oh, to have a really way with these well, things. Right no, all you have to do you is just relax like the, that. Honestly, and... it's... <laughs> there. <laughs> you know, the nerves back there get all knotted up and there. I feel better now, don't you? Don't you? <laughs> yes, I do. You're really very good at that. <laughs> That's what my mother used to say. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Richard. You bet. Great game. Great game, but Rich. Maybe next week you can play a hand yourself. It's about time. Atta boy. Man, I'm going to sleep the whole weekend. Like See you, you later, Richard. OK. Well, thanks for the use of the hall, Richard. Don't mention it. Did you like it? Oh, are you kidding? On my 16th birthday, I'd have settled for the windshield. <laughs> You're a damn good father, Richard. Mark seen it yet? Oh, no. I cannot wait to see his face. Hey, Lionel, come on. I'll <laughs> see you. What you got here? Whose is it? It's mine. Big Al gave it to him. Well, just a minute now. Once more slowly. Well, you see, Dad. Oh, I'll tell you, Jonathan. I got it this morning, Dad, for my birthday. Big Al gave it to Mark. Well, who, who, well, who's, what's Big Al? It's a name the mom calls him. Calls who? Big Al. His whole name's Al Yearling. Uh, he goes with Mom. Well, he, uh, he gave you this? Well, same thing. See, he's a dealer. And they call us an executive card. He said I can keep it until he needs it. And then he'll give me another one. Big Al's got a thousand of them. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah, it's great. Hey, Dad, is it OK if we take it to the ball game? Yeah. Sure. Sure we can. Come on in, Dad. Yeah. Rev it up for us. Come out, go. Boy, this is going to be a good ball game. Water 50. 
career. Was that making his 40th now? And no, we saw him hit his 40th last week. Well, you saw it last week. That didn't that wasn't televised, was it? No, we saw it over there with the mom. Big Al took us. Oh. Big Al sees all the games. His box is right over there, right beside third base. Yeah, all right, Jonathan, I've seen boxes before. Hey, it's only one more anyway. We better start talking about where we're going to have dinner. Oh, Dad, I forgot to tell you, I've got a date tonight. See, Big Al. Um, would you rather I call him Mr. Yearling, Dad? <laughs> call him what you want. Why should I care about that? Yeah, well, anyway, he had these two tickets to the Hollywood Bowl tonight, and uh, he and Mom were entertaining, so he gave them to me. Well, that's fine. That's fine. I'll tell you what, why don't you drop us off? Old Jonathan and I will go to dinner someplace together, huh? Mom's been seeing him for over a month now. What? Who? Mr. Yearling. Oh. Don't be embarrassed, Dad. We, we figured you'd ask all kinds of questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, good night, son. It's a great day, wasn't it? You know, in a way, we see more of each other now than we ever did, don't we? Yeah. And Mark figured out how come. What's that? Well, you always had this list of things to do. And now we're on it. Well, good night, Dad. Good night. Oh, and Dad, Big Al's okay, but he's kind of square, corny. What I mean is, you're still it with us, Dad. Well, see ya. I didn't think I'd see you again, not in this lifetime. Are you coming in, or shall I see if I can go and find myself a catcher's mitt? Look, the reason I came over is... What is that, a drink you have there? No, no, just water. I was going to take a sleeping pill. I'm glad I didn't. Look, I think I made a mistake. I think I better go. Well, I certainly want to thank you for a charming evening. Look, Nancy, I'm sorry. I, I didn't come over here to play fair. I, I was going to say anything you wanted to hear. Like, which way to the next plateau? Because, well, I, I needed you. So? 
Oh, come on. That's not what you want to hear, and you know it. Yeah, that's true. Maybe we better, both of us, think it over. Take a rain check. It isn't raining. <laughs> well, I'm on record. I gave you every chance. Oh. I agree. We talk about it later. So we've got so much to do. Yeah. How about looking for the dress first, huh? Okay. Let's see a nice basic black. Something simple. How about Joseph Magnets? Barbara. Barbara. Oh, what? I'm sorry. Honey, look, we are shopping for you. Now, if you want something fitted by Friday. I know that. Joseph Magnets. Good idea. Okay. Yeah. Hard to believe Friday will be a year, you know? You and Al celebrating anything else Friday besides the uh, final decree? Like what? Oh, I don't know. Like uh, future plans, maybe? Lionel says he wouldn't be a bit surprised if Al popped a question Friday night. Oh, I told Lionel Al was taking you to Monty's. He was very impressed. He said Ern, no. I thought we were here to shop. Sorry, doll. It's just something I find that's very. D it really isn't you, Fern. It's all my friends. Everyone fishing for information, dying to know what I feel. It really is very hard. I couldn't even express it. It's just lonely out. It's cold and lonely now. Is there anything else you want to know? Barbara, I'm sorry. Oh, how do you know me? I always put my foot in it. Oh, listen, remember what I did last night? I seem to come in two parts, Fern. And one is missing. That's funny, my feeling this way. I should be ecstatic. Al is so kind and sweet and generous, but I still, I still remember Richard. In the beginning, when when he kissed me in a certain way, I I felt my head would come off in his hands. Heads don't come off so easily after 35. I suppose. Eight twenty-five. In three hours and thirty-five minutes, you'll be free as a bird. Aren't you excited, Richard? Hmm? Oh, sure, sure. I'm so glad you decided to celebrate tonight. And Monty's, too. Whatever made you think of it? Oh, a uh, friend of mine, Lionel. Just happened to mention him. Nancy, Richard. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, there you are. I thought you'd get away from me, did you? <laughs> we thought you'd be on the town tonight, so uh, I called the house. Cynthia said you'd be here. <laughs> Well, no one's going to have more to celebrate tonight than little old Nelson. Heaven willing and the creek don't rise, so uh, we figured we'd join you. We? Yeah, me and Eunice. Eunice! Eunice, we're crying out loud, baby. What are you doing over here? <laughs> Come on over here. Careful now. Yeah. I'd like you to meet my ex-wife, Nancy Downs. And this is her fiancé, Richard Harmon. Hello. This is my fiancé, Eunice Tace. <coughs> oh, would you like to sit down? Oh, thank you. Oh, I... I've just been putting on all this weight lately. <laughs> <laughs> ah, too many sweets, you know. I get so tired. Yeah, well, too many sweets will do it. Uh, she just drove in from Bakersfield. Oh, thank you. Hey. hey. No, thanks, Hello, sorry. How are you? Oh, oh, yes, it is. It's small. Yeah. Were you born there? Or no. There? Yeah, well, my oh, wait a minute. Uh, Innkeeper, uh, a margarita for the damsel here and a Manhattan for the old knight. <laughs> and let me have an extra cherry with that if you don't mind, huh?
is looking at you. And may I say I'm grateful for the privilege? Down here, right here. Well, for heaven's sake, Nancy Downs. And Nelson's there, too. Come on, honey, I want you to meet these people. Well, 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 Nancy Downs and Nelson. By golly, I haven't seen you people in a dog's age. Oh, I'd like you to meet Barbara Harmon. Barbara, this is Nancy Downs and her ex-husband, Nelson. I'm afraid I don't know the other folk. Uh, this is my fiance, Eunice Tace. Hello. How do you do? Oh, and this is Richard Harmon. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Nancy and I used to go out together, and it was Nelson who introduced us. <laughs> I always did get the biggest kick out of that. Say, you folks are really terrific. You know, it's a great story, you see. Nelson has to pay Nancy this alimony until she remarries, so... She say Richard Harmon? Oh, <laughs> son of a gun. <laughs> Honey, do you remember the day we met? The practical joke somebody played on us the day I brought you the car? I'll bet that old Nelson. I get the picture out. If the four of us are going out to dinner, Richard. <laughs> Why the four of us? Look, we all came out to celebrate. Let's all celebrate together. <laughs> all right, Big Al? Right. <laughs> oh, innkeeper, uh, we would quaff. <laughs> Another round for the round table, if you don't mind. <laughs> Say, this is the damnedest get together I ever saw. <laughs> Funniest stories, Nelson. He really does. <laughs> he sure does. <laughs> you know, Eunice and I are the only ones who know nothing about each other. Let's drink to us, Eunice, to strangers. Huh? You don't know what strangers are till you've known two halves of a broken marriage, right, Nelson? Right. When a marriage is over, you know, it feels like something you've only read about. Uh, yeah, all those years out of your life, and you feel like they took place in an afternoon. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you can block out anything if you want to. What, well, uh, Dessers, how many million miles in diameter? You can block it out with one finger, right? That doesn't mean it isn't there. Hey, you're quite a philosopher, Richard. <laughs> of course, I've never been married, but I think the problem is that we've made a sick joke of all the old virtues. Marriage, religion. Motherhood. Oh, definitely motherhood. I think the trouble is with our legislators. Our legislators. Why don't we go off, Eunice? What's wrong with the world? What we need is laws that make it difficult to be married. It's right. Difficult to get married and easier. All the other way around. And it's all wrong. I think so. The trouble with marriage today is no mystery, really. My mother wanted it all. I needed it, believe you. To lobby. It's very simple. Marriage, work, and nobody wants to work. The real problem is that line between the sexes. Women are crossing it so much today, it's it's being erased. We see what we do. Well, the men, I mean. We confuse our jobs with our marriages. I mean, just because we work hard at the one, we think we've got the other one made. Well, whoa. Where women get mixed up, it's, it's that old law of supply and demand. We're the suppliers of all things you demand to be men. Well, I don't care if a man becomes president. At home, he gets nothing for nothing. Why resent being the supplier when that's the reason you're in demand in the first place? That boils down to one thing, working at. I mean, anything else is expected miracles. The only miracle in marriage is, is that two people find each other in the first place. The only miracle in marriage is that two people find you. know what we ought to do? You just said that. You'll be laughing at the funniest story that you've ever heard on the count of three, one, two, and three. Let yourself go. It's hysterical. The funniest story you've ever heard before in your life. The funniest story you've ever heard. So funny you can't stand it. How about these subjects? Aren't they wild? It's wonderful how free and uninhibited we are when we're hypnotized. Of course, they're not really hearing a funny story. They just think they are. It's really all in their imagination. Imagination is fantastic under hypnosis. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, the funny story is gone. Free. Thank you. Thank you. You're a marvelous audience. And your friends are great subjects. But let's see how really uninhibited they can be. Now, when I count to three, all of you can think that you are washing machines on the count of three. One, two, and three. <laughs> Isn't that wild? All right, now when I count to three, all of you on the stage are going to...
to become coffee pots. One, two, and three. Hey, look at them perk. That one over there is a Folgers nut. Whoops, there's a big drip. Let's have some fun with him. Now free. Al, open your eyes. Come here, I want to talk to you. Hi, Al, are you hypnotized? No. You're not? Well, come on over here, I want to talk to you. Kind of stiff there, aren't you? You really don't think you're hypnotized? No. You're kind of shy, I noticed. Are you normally shy? Yes. Barbara, you came with Al. How about it? When it's just the two of you, you know, alone. Is he always that shy? <laughs> oh, you poor thing. Well, maybe I could do something to loosen him up a little for you. When I count to three, all of you in the stage are chorus girls. And you do your bumps and grinds. One, two, and three. <laughs> loosen up, Al. Bumps and grinds. Well, I can't make you do it. But maybe Barbara can. The rest of you free. Barbara, see if you can coax them into it. Come on, Barbara, coax them. You can do it, Barbara. Go, come on. Give it to him, Barbara. Show him how to do it, baby. Wilder. Wilder, Barbara. Yeah. Yeah, Barbara. You can do it. Your will against it. Show him, Barbara. Show him who's the better man. I gotta take my hand off to you, Barbara. You are now the better man. What's the matter, Barbara? Don't you wanna dance? Yes. Do you like to dance? Yes. Oh, you don't want to boss Al around? No. Oh, all right, sleep. I'll boss him around. Al, I'm going to wake you up and send you back so you can watch everybody else have fun. OK, sleep. <laughs> when I count to three, Al, you can wake up and go back into the audience and watch everybody else have all the fun. One, two, and three. Wake up, Al. Good morning. How are you? Give Al a nice big hand for being such a wonderful sport. All right, now, when I count to three, all of you on the stage are going to continue your exotic bumps and grinds. One, two, and three. Wow. There she goes. Hold everything, gang. I think we found ourselves a star. White tornado. She's too good to dance in a forest. All right, she's not asleep. Sit down and sleep. In fact, all of you sit down and sleep. It's all yours now, Barbara. What I read. We've lost him. We never had him. Not really. What a show. I've seen swingers before. This kid makes them look like Girl Scouts. What's your full name? Barbara Harmon. Oh, I never asked you. Miss or Mrs.? Well, you married her, aren't you? What time is it? I ask her if she's married. She wants to know what time it is. <laughs> oh, well, are you in love? Yes. Groovy. Got a great idea. Sleep, Barbara. All righty. Barbara, when I count to three, you can open your eyes. You will not awaken. You're going to go back into the audience, and you're going to go over to the man that you love and give him the most passionate kiss that you've ever given him before in your life. <laughs> so passionate that your lips will be stuck tight to his. You haven't seen him in 10 years, Barbara. Very passionate now. On the count of three, one, two, and three. Let's fall in love. Why should Let's take a chance. Hey, why be afraid of it? Go get him, Barbara. Barbara. Come in, Barbara. Uh, what are you doing for brunch on Sunday, old pal? Nancy does an omelet like the world has never known. Three ranch eggs, dairy fresh butter, freshly grated cheddar cheese, and... Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, my. Mm. That was fun, fun, fun. It was fun, fun, fun. fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
It was so awful this past year. But now all the goop is gone from our marriage, all the strain, the tensions, it's it's out of our system. Oh, how I love you. You know something? Mm -hmm. In about three minutes, we're gonna be entering the house illicitly. <laughs> you better hurry and find that key or you're gonna have to sleep in the car. <laughs> I hope I didn't forget. <laughs> well, how could you forget a house key? Well, I didn't do it deliberately, dear. Oh, here it is. Hmm? Well, I don't say you did it deliberately. Now, you implied it. Oh, no, no. I, I know what I want to imply, what I don't want to... there's no sense in starting a thing about it. Oh, I didn't start it. No, I started it. I criticized you for misplacing a key. But I wasn't being critical. Oh. Look, sweetheart, you said you wanted to stop crossing the line between the sexes, so just once, let me win an argument, okay? Okay, you've won. Only stop being critical. Barbara! But don't get mad, darling. Marriage is hard work, remember? Barbara, you're doing it to me. Now, Richard, don't raise your voice. Remember the children. Oh, for every time I make a point, it's remember the children. <laughs> Will you do me a favor? Just tell me one thing. One thing. <laughs> Thank you.